I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and then your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Children and youth, they need models. And as the English poet Alexander Pope said, as the twig is bent, the trees incline. As the twig is bent, the trees will incline. The future of their children is perhaps the uttermost thoughts in the minds of you parents. The future of your kids. And I would also add the grandparents as well. Each parent hopes that every child will grow in character and citizenship to get along with friends and associates and to make an honorable place in the world. And then I would add, for the local church, that list would include a healthy spiritual faith, a healthy spiritual identity. And you would be interested in knowing this, about this young man named Timothy. He was born in the first century in a town called Lystra, which is in Asia Minor, which is located in the western tip of what is known today as Turkey. And early in Timothy's life, he came to know the Apostle Paul, and he became an associate of the Apostle Paul. And the picture that we get of Timothy in the New Testament clearly centers around three things, that, that Timothy was a person who was sound in his character, successful in his work, and was a valued friend. Think of those three. Sound in his character, successful in his work, and was a good person as well, valued as a friend. He is the kind, or she is the kind, of young person that any parent would be proud to say, that's my girl, that's my boy. So, what? What are the factors that went into making this young man, Timothy, what can we glean from the scriptures that, that he is set up before us as this young person of great faith? What was it? Well, for one thing, his environment was a factor. What kinds of things he was, was around. Life essentially is molded by environment. We are shaped by surroundings, and Proverbs is very clear about that. It says in the Proverbs, it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, I know sometimes we have to have patience because it says, when he or she is old, okay? It's this duration from confirmation to where they get old, and we say, please hold on to that faith that you're a part of. But we embrace it. We hold on to that because the home is the first school. What goes on around the household? And Timothy was surrounded by a home environment 
that encouraged a respect for the Scriptures, the Bible. Paul wrote elsewhere, he said, I know how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred scriptures which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And then Paul also recognizes that while that is in place, we have a personal responsibility. That personal choice is important. And you find him appealing to Timothy's free will. And Paul would write Timothy, and he would encourage him. I love what, what Paul wrote elsewhere to Timothy. He said, shun youthful passions and aim at righteousness. Isn't that good? Shun youthful passions <laughs> and aim, aim at righteousness. And he also said, Paul to Timothy, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you. So there is this rekindling aspect that the individual has that is within us. Paul understood that personal character and achievement rests not merely on environment, but on what a person chooses to do with the environment. You need the environment, but also there's this choice that we have to make. Now, there's, there's an old classic rabbinical legend that says that every time, right when life is conceived, God decides whether it will be male or female, short or tall, stout or thin, but on one matter, whether it be good or bad, one thing God does not decide, for that lies in the person's will. Part of that freedom that God has placed us and given us, which is the most ultimate act of love we have outside what Jesus did on the cross by giving us freedom. And I think every parent here will agree that one of the central problems in dealing with the child is to make that child want to do the things that will turn them and make them responsible adults. You can give your children a fine heritage and a good environment, but how can you make them want to be worthwhile individuals? That connection. Well, think of this. The Apostle Paul was a man who traveled, had a lot of experience. He lived in Jerusalem, then he went to Corinth, then he went to Ephesus. And then he went to Rome, but Paul would be the first to say he was also living at another place in all of those places and at all those times. Paul would use the expression, he would talk about being in Christ. That wherever he was, over 50 different places in the New Testament, do we find the Apostle Paul talking about being in in Christ, wherever he was, he was in Christ. You find him referring this in his letters. Now, what was he saying? What he was saying is that it was this in Christ was the environment that he chose to guide him and fabricate and make him. What did Paul say? He said, if anyone is in Christ... Not necessarily Jerusalem or Rome or Corinth or Ephesus or Milwaukee. But being in Christ, he says, if any person is in Christ, that person is a new creation. Well, as we um, introduce our youth to the friendship of Christ through confirmation, they come to live also in that environment of God's Spirit. 
having given them that, along with the best encouragement that we can do as a church, as a community of faith, the best kinds of facilities we can provide for that instruction to take place, it is our hope that they will continue to grow in God's favor and may the faith live on from generation to generation. That's why this is such a beautiful, sacred, remarkable occasion because we understand that wherever we are, we can be in Christ. At the workplace, at school, forever we are to be in Christ, not in ourselves. And so today is a special day for our church family. As we gather to celebrate confirmation, and it is a day when Emma and Sally, they will affirm their commitment to Christ and publicly declare their faith in him. And it is also a day when they confirm the promises made for them at their baptism. And they take ownership for their spiritual journey. So, the other reality is, I'm sorry, but confirmation is just the beginning. It's not over. It's a point of reference and of affirmation and confirmation, but it's the beginning. It is a moment when we affirm the reception of the Holy Spirit upon us to guide our youth and to empower them and comfort them. It is a moment in which they commit themselves to live a life of love and of service and of obedience to God. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. So, Emma and Sally, as you two embark on this new chapter of your lives, remember this. You're not alone. Don't try to do it alone. You weren't by yourself when you were up here sharing your faith. Your church is with you. It's not something that you are to do by yourself. You try to do it by yourself, and it won't work. You're part of a larger community that is committed to following Jesus Christ and committed to living out his teachings. So, let's lean on each other, okay? It's all right to do that. Lean on each other for support, for encouragement, and let us always turn to God in prayer and devotion. And God's people said, amen.